Hi, this is Yasmita Megan, and I'm speaking to you from Melbourne, Australia. And I'm here on this session going to cover brand new products. And the first one's going to be some thread bags that we've introduced in the last two years. And the first bag I'm going to introduce is the style number is CA625 on our website. So if you like it, you can make a note of it and you're welcome to look at it further. And what I would like to mention is everything we provide is on our website, on the homepage. You will find a media section. There's lots of time-lapse videos. There's an area under the craft bags where you've got an inspirational area where you can see lots of different ideas from designers and just crafters like yourself who've decided to make something really beautiful on Yazzie bags. So keep looking at the website and do sign up for our newsletter because we do offer lots of specials and you will be quite keen to see the rest of the products that we're uploading every day as far as our trims, embellishments and beautiful silk fabrics as well. So I'm going to start with the CA625, which is the smaller thread organizer. I'll just put the insert up so you can see that exactly. Okay, so this is our smaller version of the craft of my thread organizer. And as you can see, there's a Velcro in front, which opens up. And I'll talk about this thread bag. But to start off, I just want to explain, this is a very generous size Velcro. It's as sturdy as you're going to get as far as quality, and it should last for many years to come. Now, I was not able to get hold of that many threads for you, but it does fit about 50 threads, and they would be around the Oriful, the Eleganza, some of the wonderful threads. That was what this bag was designed for. But I filled it with lots of other items to give you a good space, a visual of it. So you've got embroidery threads, anything that you might need. And the important thing for you to know is these bags are gusseted uh, on the sides. And they need to, they can be expanded quite a bit. So you can fill quite a few threads in here in the front pocket. Don't feel that it's not going to fit. Right now, I was just not able to get hold of that many. So I filled it with other products. Now... Let's look at this pocket. Again, this is a horizontal pocket. And the reason I wanted to show you is some of the bigger reels in here. This is what I originally made this for this size of uh, cottons. And in the middle, I've put these little elasticated areas where you can put your scissors, you might put your pens, your markers, you can put extra threads if they're slightly smaller and used. So that gives you a good option. And in this particular side of the bag, I wanted to show you that I was able to get this size, this little baby hoop in here. I was able to get this little tin of the Bohin safety pins in here too. So that gives you the bit of the breadth and the amount that you can fit in here and shut the zipper with no problems. So I've got some threads in here too, some other bits and pieces. So it is quite a generous bag where you'll be surprised how much you will be able to manage to get into this bag. And I wanted to show it to you as close as I possibly can to the screen so you can judge it. Now, as I said, this was the Velcro cover. I've opened it up. You've got both these areas and the center area to do whatever you need to. And when you turn this bag over at the back, we've also got space for lots of threads. 
So if you collect a lot of threads and you want to keep them dust free and clean and accessible when you're doing your projects, you might want to line up a particular project threads on the outside cover and stay with that for that project. So you can access it quickly and view it quickly. Now the beauty of this bag is you'll be surprised we can fit on all four sides the same amount of threads, no problems. I've seen them filled over and over again, and it closes like a little clutch bag for you. So if you look at that, that's exactly what it looks like, and you will find great use for it if you feel that you want to keep your threads stored. Uh, You'd spend a lot of money on these threads, and I always was asked over the years if we can create some thread storage bags, and this is what we've done, and we've done extremely well with this product. Then, obviously, like anything else with our bags, someone would come up and say, oh, that's great, but, you know, we've got so many more threads that we'd like to store. Can you not create a larger bag? So in progression, we definitely went out there and created the second bag. And uh, before I do that, I'm going to show you some ideas of what people, after they buy this bag, how they embellish the bags and make them look beautiful. So let you see that before we move to our next bag. everyone. I'm Becky Goldsmith with Piece of Cake and I want to quickly show you Yazzie's Thread Organizer. It comes like this and there are four big zippered pouches um, and inside each one it's designed to hold pretty large spools of thread. So for example this um, this thread from Wonderfill. Yes fits in there very nicely. This thread from Aurafil also fits in there and would, if it was all the way full, it would zip. Now if you load it with these big spools front and back, I'm not sure how well great big spools would also fit on the back side. I have a feeling you might need to have some bigger and some smaller if they're going to be front to back. All right, so let me back this up. Not that far, this far. So this is how it comes. Um, in fact, here's one I haven't opened yet. I wanted to show you that on the inside here, I have not taken out the foamy inserts. It'll come with those foamy inserts on all four pockets to protect them during shipping. All right, so there's a purple one, and there's a blue one. There's supposed to be a green one. I don't have it yet, but I might have it one of these days. 
Then I wanted to show you how I have loaded mine because truth be told, I never carry that much thread. I, w I would never carry around this whole thing full of thread. Mostly if I'm appliquing, I'm working off of bobbins and when I'm working on other spools of thread, the most I might carry is this many. So what I've loaded mine with are the things I would want to carry if I was going somewhere to sew. So I've got, just generally, I'm, I might resort this later as I get to using it, but I've put marking tools and kind of long skinny things out here on the front. And on the other side, I haven't loaded it yet. On the inside, I put tools that I would use as I'm sewing because it makes sense to me that this would be open flat when I was using it. And I just sort of guessed about what I would put in here. Shoot, if I was also knitting something, I might put knitting needles in there. I don't know. Um, long skinny things. Besides what I've got here, I can, nothing comes to mind, but I'm sure it would. I like this part. Um, being thick enough and tall enough that I can carry different kind of pins you know, in my, my pin cushion tin and I like being able to fit easily my needle threader I like that I've got a bunch of needles in here and then on the back side I haven't put anything yet whoops that fell down because I wanted to show you let me close this pull this up that you could also put in here something like a rotary cutter. Yes, you could definitely do that. Could you put a rotary cutter and scissors? Yes, if you wanted to, you probably could. So there's plenty of spaces to put really kind of good size items in a relatively compact carrying case. It's functional. It's not terribly expensive, it's well made. Yes, this is a nice tool. <coughs> Excuse me. I hope you've enjoyed seeing this and I hope you have many happy stitches. Thanks for watching. So this is the front of the bag. You've got your yazzie.com label in here. I've got a zipper pocket in here to keep your phone or anything that you might have a set of keys, etc. in this pocket. So that is your external pocket. Again, it's our high quality quilted fabric around it. And in this case, I've used an aqua color sample. On the reverse side, <clears throat> I've given you pockets again where you can fit lots about 12 of your threads in here comfortably I just didn't have that many threads to fill to display them for you they all have a gusset in here on either side so you can stretch the plastic and it does seem to fit a lot more than you sort of would think it would so this is the external part of the bag <clears throat> it has handles like this so it's like a little handbag now I'm going to open the bag. Okay. So this is the view. Let's start from the top of the bag. So there's the one with the <clears throat> in here. I want I'm going to take off things so that you can view them. A little closer and you can see this is the size of the crochet thread I've got in here and I've managed to get five I should have been able to get six in here I just didn't have the second one so that's uh, something I wanted you to look at and the reason I put 
different items that gives you a better visual of the bag and you can see the products the various threads i have in there closely and that will help you understand the bag <clears throat> so in here i put the rotary cutter some fabrics some trims some embellishments just to fill up the bag and give you some idea of space the next pocket that's in front of you is the two horizontal packets and i wanted to tell you show you the thread that fits comfortably it could have been a little taller i don't think there would have been a problem as you can see the pockets much higher than that and then we've got in this pocket i've put the same threads and i've also put the smaller crochet little balls of uh, crochet threads so that gives you an idea of how much it fits like when we say it's 100 106 we're talking about normal threads so this is one pocket i wanted to show you then in this case we've got the standard ones that we made this bag for but again within the standard ones like this size we want to show you that it does take a larger spool as well it doesn't have to be just one size all will happen all that would happen is you'd fit a little less number of threads but we know most definitely it fits about 106 of general threads again here i want to show you the thicker one that came in so that's all i could find to pack these up for you i wanted to show you the shorter ones that you might have in your collection they work really well in here too like if i didn't have all these various products there would be a question around other threads fitting so i think in some ways this has worked out pretty well where i can show you the various threads they're very comfortable as you use them and unzip and uh pull some out they start stretching a little bit the plastic and it's very comfortable i promise you that so that's the third pocket the layer of it in here i put some embellishing stuff i've got some of these little braids and stuff just to fill it up and give you a good visual of it and in the last pocket i put the shorter threads for you so there's a big collection of those that's four six eight ten twelve 14, 15, you could also have fitted a little more in there. So this is all the threads. Because you might be collecting various thread types from different companies, and it just starts finding its home within your bag. And I think uh, all you want is to make sure that it stays together, accessible, viewable when you need it. And I think it's a great bag. This is the larger size. It depends on what you feel, whether you want to, you choose to use the smaller size that I've shown you. Now, the style number on this bag, the smaller one, is CA625 on my website, on our website. And the larger one is CA635, if you'd like to make a note of it. So in here again... I've shut the bag with all these threads in here. And you've got a handle and it works brilliantly. Very popular. We've done extremely well with both these bags. The choice is yours to make from a size perspective. I've shown you the various threads and that's about the extent and the two varieties we've got for your collection of threads if you're a serious thread collector. I'm going to play a little video for you with uh, some ideas around this bag and embellishing it, and uh, we'll take it to the next product after this.
Okay. The seven colors Yazi provides all and supplies all, all the bags that we do is black, navy, a vibrant new red, like the Benina red. We've got a hot pink, a fuchsia, we call it, a green, a purple, and an aqua. So you have your choice of any color, and it seems to have appealed to everyone and satisfied everybody's needs. There comes a time when I get people saying, do you make them in orange or in electric blue? We cannot have that many colors because our range is around 40 bags. We've got warehouses in Europe, in the US and Australia. So to manage the stock and inventory is very difficult. And as you know, it's a very costly affair. So for now, I'm happy with the seven colors, and this is what we will provide. The red actually replaced a maroon, like a burgundy we used to have many years ago. So for now, I'll start moving now to the embroiders bag. The style number on our website is CA58. So again, this bag has a handle, and uh, you can see the handle is quite long. You can put it over your shoulder. It's a pretty comfortable handle for everybody who's much taller than I am. So, and it's got the little pipings going through. So it gives you a lot of security all the way through the bag. And it comes out on the other side. So, and it's got nice, long, comfortable handles. So let's look at the bag in total. So in here, I've opened the first pocket and got a, three pockets in here to keep your clips, your pins, anything you might need, but they've been divided in three ways. Now, often people say, well, I don't really need this here. All you have to do is unpick this area. Do it carefully and you will see that it'll work as a total pocket for you because it's difficult to provide a bag and all the different pockets to suit everyone. But we have tested these for about 18 months to two years before we decided that this style is ideal for you. Now, in this case, what I did is I wanted to give you an area maybe to put a name tag in here. So you might have that pocket in the, here to show your name tag. Then in here, I've put some areas, some fabric little sleeves and slots to keep your pens and markers. And under that, when you have a scissors, you might want to keep it in here under a fabric pocket instead of choosing to use them over a plastic sleeve just in case it gets damaged. So I thought about it in this bag and prepared lots of variations on this cover flap so you can use this and begin setting up your the rest of your bag. Now in here, I've got embellishments. Again, you've got these little gussets in here that gives you room. So if you look at these, all these are pretty thick and they fit quite well in there. I could have got a couple more in there. And in here, I've got lots of threads. Now, these would be the smaller size threads. So there are three horizontal pockets here. So now I'm changing, turning the page now, and we've come to the third area for you to pack your stuff. Now we've got four pockets, equal sizes. Again, if this one, you prefer the one which is divided, and in this case, you feel your products might need a fuller pocket, you just unpick this area and you'll get the full clear horizontal pocket for yourself. The next pocket we've got is a full sleeve, a full page maybe to keep your book or anything that you might have. This is an 8-inch hoop that I fitted comfortably in here. I just wanted to show you all these products inside so you can imagine what does work for you. Because on our website, with all the pictures we have, we get lots and lots of questions from everyone all over the world every day asking for specific configuration of the pockets. And it's very hard to take a picture of every sleeve and put it on the website. Now we've got time-lapse videos for you, so they take you page by page. 
this is another form of presenting to you our bags and sharing each pocket and talking about it as we're going through. So I hope you enjoy this type of a visual impact of what we're doing today and it helps you understand our bags. Now, the next page we have are full horizontal pockets. Now, in this case, when I told you, you might need it. If you don't, then leave the four pockets for your smaller items. In here, we've provided full horizontal pockets. And that's why people keep their knitting needles in here. I've noticed they keep their wool. They just seem to love this bag for knitting. But I keep wondering where they're keeping their wool. They might be using another wool bag. But definitely for the little items, it seems to work. So these are the two horizontal pockets. Now let's take it to the last sleeve, where this is the end of the bag, the cover. Now in here, you've got, let me take this out so that can, you've got a quilted pocket right at the back where you can put a very large hoop. If you're doing needlepoint, I've seen canvases go in here. You've got, I'm just putting the catalog to give you an idea that there's a pocket there. Then we've got another pocket, a fabric pocket in here that you can place another book or your samples or your whatever you need to in here. Then we put the larger pocket at the bottom with a zipper, totally visual. You can fit a lot of stuff. I mean, this is just one third of what I could get in this bag. Just try to stuff it as much as I could to give you an idea of what does fit in this bag. So this was the end of the bag. This is the page before that. Then we've got the one for the hoop. Then I've got the four pockets in here. Then we've got the three horizontal pockets in here for your threads, etc. This is your cover page now, again, with three pockets. And you've got your markers and pens. You can put your personal name tag in here. And you've got the pocket for your little scissors. I think it's a perfect bag for embroidery. And every show we do, we'll have people who would have bought this about 15 years ago and 18 years ago when they say, the best thing I've ever bought for embroidery. Could not live without it. So I'm happy that you happy. And all I've tried to do over the last 20 years is bring you bags that suit your needs. It might not be perfect for everything you need. But for now, I think we've done a great job in providing a wide variety for all crafters. I hope you enjoyed seeing this bag. And we will now move to the next product that I'd like to present, which is our iron storage bags. Now this was a bag and our style number on our website is CA 580. This was made for iron sold in Australia for many years. We've been selling this bag. It's perfect. Anyone that comes to a show will go through all the stock we have at every show every day because people do need a place to keep their little mini irons. Now, unfortunately, in the US, we this iron was not available till much recently, like three, four years ago, we started seeing these irons and we started selling heaps more in the US. But in Australia, we've always had this iron. So this is an Australian version of an iron, the plugs, the cords, everything that goes in here. And in this bag, we've got a centerpiece to keep your little iron in front and your cords in there. If you feel you don't want, if you find this annoying you or whatever you prefer it just easy you can unpick the sides they just stitches along the side and you'll get that perfect area for you to keep your entire iron with your cords it's perfect now it's important for you to know that you cannot put a hot iron in the base of the bag it wasn't made for that and if you're wondering why there was no point buying teflon and sending it to the factory 
you can buy a two dollar piece from any craft shop and place it at the base and often i've asked this question to people that does it really matter i mean you know it does take a reasonably warm iron but not a hot hot iron but you wouldn't do it at home with your normal iron so there's a bit of common sense that has to go into using these products as well and i did not want to bring it to you at twice the price it's a very reasonably priced bag it's perfect for you to just keep your bag hop along to your class and carry it everywhere you go so that's been perfect now after that recently we've ended up seeing a lot of the oliso irons that are out uh in the in the area so i'll just show you the box there's a box for the alisa irons we've seen them at so many different shows and as i started seeing them i had customers ask me will this little bag take the alisa iron no it was never made for it it's a much bigger iron it's got a base as well i mean i've seen people try and squeeze their bag and say oh it does fit but it really doesn't. It's going to strain the zipper and cause all kinds of problems. Now, we have lots of larger irons as well that are in the market, but this seems to be a very popular one recently. Now, before I finish on this bag, I'm going to quickly, which I did forget to mention, if you remove this little piece, you can get a Rowenta iron in the U.S., you can fit your clover iron in there perfectly. It has worked for quite a few different versions of your mini travel irons. Now, coming back to that iron that was made for specifically those Oliso irons, I designed the larger bag thinking this would be perfect. So this is the size. I'll just remove all these items that are in there. So this will give you a visual of what they are. One's much bigger than the other, taller, higher, a little bigger, and we've removed that center piece from here. So if you like the larger bag and you have a larger iron, this works fantastically. Now, our larger irons have ended up in the US yesterday. All our stock has arrived. It's on its way to Kentucky now for supply in the US. Unfortunately, I'm not going to have them in Australia this year unless I can try and get a courier. But right now, nothing under the circumstances we are living in is easy for us to bring across by air freight or courier. So I might not make this year. But in the US, there's thousands of these products that have gone, these iron bags, because we had such a huge demand for it. So just so that you know, don't buy the little one and think it's going to fit your Oliso iron. If you look at our website, they're going to become available now in the next week for you to place your order. You're welcome to do it then. I'm going to play a little video for you to show you the new iron bag. And the code is CA555 on my website. Okay, it's time to say goodbye today. And before I do that, I want to share our experiences at the various shows we've been doing over the last few years. And this is the communication vehicle we're going to be using now to present our products. 
We miss all of you out there at the various shows, and we look forward to finally coming back and visiting with you again. But for now, I'm going to leave you with a little clip and our catalog to give you a good idea of what we carry. Goodbye.